helping creators navigate the waters of podcasting. Welcome to the Podcast Cadet Training Series, where we simplify the world of podcasting with techniques and advice from professionals across the podcasting industry. Here, your host coming to you live from the Podcast Cadet Studio here in Austin, Texas. Welcome once again to the Podcast Cadet Training Series. This is episode three. We're still so early in this series, but been covering so much great meat. Our guest today, once again, is the amazing Wayne Sutton. Uh, we will be talking to Wayne about uh, his new website, fantastic stuff over here. Uh, Neuro pers- your persuasion coach.com. We're going to be talking about the concept of neuropersuasion and exactly not only what that is, but how that can help us in the world of podcasting, not only as hosts, but for those of you out there doing podcasting for your business, for those of you out there that are literally setting yourself up as, as we say here at this company, a quote, trusted voice in an industry. Um, it is utterly so important. And it, a lot of it has to do with literally the way that you mentally approach a situation. You kind of have to learn to shoot from the side with your own thoughts sometimes. Um, you got to learn to get rid of that own negative self-talk, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be getting into all of that and more with Wayne Sutton from YourPersuasionCoach.com. Uh, right after this quick commercial. Have you considered starting a podcast? Looking for a way to make your business a voice of authority in an industry? Then Podcast Cadet is the solution for you. Whether starting a podcast for yourself, your brand, business, school, church, or just plain fun, Podcast Cadet is here to help you navigate the waters of the podcast industry. Specializing in one-on-one consultation and training with industry professionals in fields ranging from podcast technology and editing to distribution, monetization, and even social media strategies, Podcast Cadet tailors their services to the specific needs of you and your podcast. Do you already have a podcast and trying to find ways to engage and grow your audience? Sign up for your Podcast Cadet audit today. And let us help you explore new and exciting ways to leverage your content and elevate your podcast brand to whole new levels. From consultation and workshops to affordable podcast production and maintenance packages, Podcast Cadet is your one-stop shop for everything podcast related on the internet. Visit podcastcadet.com today to sign up for your consultation or training. That website again is podcastcadet.com. And, of course, full disclosure, folks, I am one of the founders and owners of Podcast Cadet. The whole reason I started this program uh, with my wife, who is an improv and comedy script writing coach, uh, and other people that I know who are involved in the world of social media, uh, media distribution, things like that. The whole reason that we came up with this concept is that so many people start off so impetuously in this endeavor called podcasting, um, but they don't necessarily consider all the gears necessary. And one of the gears necessary, especially if you are doing podcasting for your business. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean like podcasting for profit, folks. This could be an internal podcast within a company, mind you. This could be a podcast that you're starting about the world of aluminum rain gutters and the technology of rain gutters, you know, because, hey, I own a rain gutter company. I don't, but you get the idea. Um, That is exactly what our guest, uh, neuropersuasion expert, Wayne Sutton, will be talking about today. Wayne, welcome back to the show. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you. And, uh, I love how you started that with the amazing Wayne Sutton. I'm like, I'm going to listen to that. I've never been called amazing. So. <laughs> um, 
Next time my wife says, hey, you're not amazing, I'm like, yeah, well, I have proof well, that I, I am. So. I beg to differ. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but I am doing great. Say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you for having me on. I look forward to sharing, um, talking about, when I, th- when I say persuasion, when I think about persuasion, I really just think about communication mm. and, um, and, and impact in the world through communication sure it could be a small world your family it could be a global stage so i am more than excited to be on the show today well once again thank you so much for coming back on the show to talk about this amazing new website that you have this amazing new program neuropersuasion coaching let's let's get into that a little bit and then we'll get into how that relates to the world of podcasting, how that how that relates to everything that we do as business people and yeah. as podcast hosts, even. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think one thing is podcast hosts. What you have to remember is one of the if you want people to know, like and trust you. you now, a lot of people use that terminology, know, mm. like and trust all in one little cliche, but that's three separate words. They may know you. Then they may begin to like you. Then they be, may begin to trust you. And when someone trusts you, it's the easiest to get somebody to do business with you, sure. to grab a hold and follow you. If you're if you're not just trying to sell someone something, but you're maybe you have a mission, you have a purpose outside of uh, even business. They need the trust that you are going to be able to help them, and that they're working with like-minded people. That's why I love podcasting yeah. because. Yeah, I can jump on YouTube and I can watch a video, and I do that a lot. Uh, I can turn on a documentary, but if I find a podcast that I enjoy, me personally, I go and listen to one episode. If I like it, I'll scroll, scroll, scroll. Episode one, and then I'm listening to it, episode after episode after episode. So either I lose interest or I'm like truly indoctrinated mm-hmm. into this person. That's the power of podcasting. If you bring the good, and if you use communication properly, I can't think of a better, I truly cannot think of a better source to build a business around, except podcasting because of that. Well, and uh, you know, that, that's an interesting point because as someone who produced in, in radio, live streaming, uh, local TV, things like that, that was that was such a big part of that quote trusted voice concept was that mm-hmm. um, not every anybody could be reading you the news, let's say. Um, sure. Any anybody could be giving you news of the weird, all kinds of stuff. But the reason why we tune into the morning show that we tune into in the morning, the reason why we tune into that talk radio show at lunch is because we like that host. There is something about them that Mm -hmm. makes it seem like a fireside chat, makes it seem like you are sitting there with a friend with a cup of coffee, or even like my show, Dudes and Beer. Like you're sitting there having a beer, having this deep discussion with somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, And and that's the thing, is that there's... once you tie into that, there is this beautiful interpersonal relationship between host and audience. Um, and, yes. And, and that's what you mean by neuropersuasion. Is, and it's not like mesmerizing people with your look, you know, or, or giving, people, <laughs> uh, giving people subtle clues within your conversation to get them to call to your, to your way, so to speak. Um, you're not going to make anybody bark like a dog on the bus, people, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, that's a great point. That's a, yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad we'll definitely get into that. The yeah. differences and yeah. Yeah. And well, let's start cracking the nut per se of, of neuro persuasion and, and what that really is all about. Uh, just so that everybody Absolutely. understands that, so that we can kind of turn it back around to the world of podcasting. Yeah, so I'll start with kind of the mission statement behind it, or our tagline, if you will, because our tagline says it all. And from that, the tagline is our mission statement. The mission statement is, is what neuropersuasion is. It's learning to influence yourself. Influence yourself, influence others, and then impact the world. 
So I'll give you an example of a podcast host is, a, is ready to do a podcast, but maybe they're just their energy isn't there. Maybe the self-doubt, whatever it may be. Sure. A businessman is about to walk into a meeting, but his energy isn't there. He's his self-doubt. He had a fight with his wife, and he's bringing that into it. He's, a person will be less productive. And when you're less productive, then it's almost like this um, spiraling effect. The, the low productivity, the low mindset just brings low results. And low results bring low productivity and low mindset. And so we have to get out of that. And estate management, and I'll, come, I'll, I'll give a short um, example of this in a moment, but state management, learning how to control yourself. What beliefs do you have? What limited beliefs? Can you control your own state of mind? It's only then that you can influence others. And influence others. People say, well, Wayne, what does that mean? Does that mean, as you said, make them you know, <laughs> cluck like a chicken, bark like a dog <laughs> yeah, on stage? Yeah. <clears throat> and yes, I can do that. But it really doesn't, other than a few laughs, it's not that productive. So, uh, <laughs> so instead of, and we're not going to hypnotize somebody to say, yeah. come do business with me. At the same time, we are going to use the way that we were created, our mind has certain pathways of making good decisions or bad decisions. Yeah. That's just a reality. And some yeah. people know that, and they, they make great decisions. There's other people that make bad decisions, and we need to be able to help them recognize their decision-making patterns. Mm. And when I say influence, it can be used. In fact, I really, really want to use this inside of the education system because I believe when teachers and professors need to recognize how people learn, but also be more persuasive in getting that information across. Yes. It can be used in the boardrooms. It's been used in real estate. I've trained people in a number of different industries where they go, hey, if my sales do not double, I'm losing everything. Like, Great. Then let's learn how to influence the person in front of you. Now, I've had people say, Wayne, well, that sounds very manipulative and et cetera, et cetera. Um, you, can, you can engage any word around it you choose, but if you are – helping someone with the right product or service and they need it, then I think it's your right. And I think it's your responsibility to be able to influence properly. And then finally impact in the world. And so that world for me, when I use neuro persuasion at home, I'm helping my daughters, my wife make great decisions. We're building a family structure around that. When I go and I, I go out and I, speak, whether it be in business or ministry, then I go out and I use neuro persuasion in a way that's going to help impact and change that world. So that's a long answer to say it's all about controlling the way we think and helping other people think in a way that's going to be most productive for them. It does include persuasion. It does include influence. Podcasting, if you think about this, all of the podcast hosts, people are hearing your words. And there's audio I and mean, there's video. I get that as well, but they're hearing your words and your words will influence the way people think, not only your tonality and your rate, but even some of the language patterns, the questions that you ask. So that's why I'm really, really excited about using and teaching neuro persuasion inside the realm of podcasting. Are you still there? Sorry. Um, yes. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> it, I think it's very important to to talk about that for just a minute. Just the fact of that lingering self doubt that you mentioned a minute ago that so many people have when they begin their podcasting journey, or even whenever they begin their mm. business journey. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, can I do this? Is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and it's really one of those, like, for me, it's just like you said, do you have a mission is, is your business a mission? Mm -hmm. Cause if it is, you will wake up and work on it like 18 hours a day, every day without complaint. Yes. You yeah. know, um, and <clears throat> I think a lot of people get into business sometimes, um, because they think something might be easier than what they're doing. Uh, but at the same time, there's there's a negative self-talk that happens with a lot of people that discourages them from pursuing that independence, per discourages them 
from starting a podcast for their business uh, because they think like, yeah, sure, like I do roofs, but who the heck's going to listen to somebody talk about roofing, you know? Yeah. Well, I think what you just said is that it's a self-talk. Mm. But all self-talk, even limited self-talk, comes from a there's a genesis effect. You know, the word genesis means a new beginning. It means a new, a, a new birth. There's a reason somebody thinks the way they think. I can't do this. I'll never be able. I'm not good with technology. I'm not good. You know, who cares about roofing? Any of those questions comes because something in our past has made us think that way or they, we heard somebody say it in a way that we were maybe somebody we respected or we tried something this is the big one we try we didn't fully commit but we try something and it failed and the mind says "Ooh, let's stay away from failure failure doesn't feel good see in neuro persuasion i talk a lot about the different chemicals in the brain now, such as when we do something that's good and we get a reward, that dopamine, you know, that dopamine addiction that people are yep. seeking, uh, when you really connect, like you said, that fireside chat, sometimes you really connect with someone and, and literally even just listening, you can start having oxytocin flow through the blood and so will they. And it's just amazing. You build a massive rapport. Yeah. With me, I want to learn that. If I'm thinking something or, or I, I catch myself, I have to catch the words, not just so I can change it. You know, if somebody says, I'm not good at, uh, I'm not good at martial arts and they're facing me to go get in a fight. You know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you know, not just changing the words to no, I'm good, but why did I believe that anyway? What was it that yeah. made me believe that? So neuro persuasion, I have people come and go, teach me how to double my sales. Teach me how to influence. I'm like, well, let's work on you first. It yeah, may not yeah. be as sexy, but it, it's what's going to bring real change. And then we can help people influence others as well. Well, now, exactly what do you mean by that? Uh, whenever you say, let's focus on you first. Because um, I, I, I spent my years in youth ministry, all that kind of fun stuff. And one of the, one of the things that I used to teach people in a sex and sexuality class was if if you're looking for somebody to complete you, you need to figure yourself out first. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you you yeah. really need to like love yourself for who you are, mistakes, flaws, everything that's there. Be willing to work on yourself. Be willing to say, yes, I'm wrong. Um, so uh, exactly where does somebody start that process, especially whenever you're talking about podcast host whenever you're talking about that concept of i'm about to step into the ring of being a trusted voice being somebody okay. that someone comes to either for advice in this industry or just good entertainment yeah so one of the where one of the places to start is in the emotion realm now a lot of a lot of coaches and consultants will have you go and we, we start this analytical road, like when you were seven years old, what happened to you? That's okay, but there's a quicker way. And, I, and that's one thing about your persuasion as well. I believe in collapse in time. Let's get the effects. And let's get things working quicker. So I'm a podcast host or a podcast host wannabe. I've recorded two episodes, and I got three downloads, and I'm freaking out, and I don't know what to do. Should I still? But what the first thing to do is you have to what, what we call future pace. And that means looking ahead in the future. And now, as you talked about in ministry, when I was and I was in helping people in ministry, I would say, hey, let's look at what your future is going to look like. You know, so the the teenagers that are, you know, they're fighting hormones. They're wanting to have sex. And we're like, wait a minute, let's look at how you're going to be 10, 20, 30 years now. What does that picture look like? Because what you're about to do may not lead to that. So, Everybody just listening, unless you're driving a car or doing something unsafe, just play with me. We're, we're just going to have a moment here of fun. Um, so as you're listening to this podcast and you're hearing me, just literally just close your eyes. And I want you to imagine, imagine anybody can imagine, it's simple, we do it all the time. But to imagine maybe one, two, maybe even three years in the future. And I want you to imagine that your podcast 
is reaching the people you wanted to reach. I want you to, how does that look? Because you already know how the studio looks, mm. your logo, you know how your audience looks. And even with your eyes closed, I want you to just make that picture really simple. Just imagine. But more importantly, I want you to notice how you feel. You are a podcast host. You're making the, you're reaching the audience that you know is important. You're making the money that you know you want to make all of that. But how do you feel with me, with neuro persuasion? That's my goal is to help somebody envision that first, because then when you go, I don't know if I should record another one. I don't know if I should record. I don't know if I'm getting any viewers. Maybe I should change. Maybe I should just give up that vision of you in the future, reaching the people, doing what you want to do. That's going to stand stronger. And we always make one of the number one rules of persuasion. We always make decisions based on emotion every single time. Even if you analyze things, the emotional part of the brain makes a decision. So that emotion of how it's going to look when it's great is going to be stronger than your negative emotion in the moment. Mm. So that's just one area. And that's something you can do multiple times. You can just close your eyes and think how you want it to look one, two, three years now. How does it feel? You've got to get the emotion in there. And I never understood that until I started studying how the brain works. And I'm like, well, why is the emotion got to be there? It sounds a little woo-woo, a little new agey woo-woo stuff. And uh, law of attraction, I'm not into that. I'm like, no, I want, I want science behind it. And one of my mentors said, because when you get the emotion strong and you hold it for a minute, the mind will literally start creating into the bloodstream. You'll have the endorphins. You'll have the dopamine. You have a chemical change in the mind, but you also have changes inside the brain. Literally, the brain can rewire itself. Now, that doesn't happen the first time you do it, but it can over a period of uh, maybe 20, 21 days, 28 days. So that's how a podcast host goes, I want to be the best. Then you have to make that image of what it looks like. Because here's another thing that's very interesting. If it's not, if you, if you make that image and you don't, can't pull that emotion, you can't, it, maybe it isn't for you. And then you can recognize that quickly and move on. Mm. But that's the first step in persuasion is, is really getting the emotions behind it and moving forward. And, Remember, every decision is based on emotion. I've never had anybody prove me wrong on that. I've had people come up front in my seminars and, well, what about this, Wayne? And before it was over, they're like, ah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I just felt uh, something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. I just felt something. Yeah. 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 And it, it, that, that's a very interesting way to put it. Um, as, as the son of a salesman and a saleswoman, um, it really was, and I, I had the very unique opportunity to observe my dad in the field working and selling and things right. like that when I was very young because he would come and pick us up for the weekend, and oftentimes whenever he'd pick us up, he still had a call or two to make on the way home at different shops. Uh, at the time, he was a regional sales manager here in South Texas for Cooper Tire and Rubber Company. So he was mm. he was selling commas and zeros worth of tires whenever he went through a front door um and it was always a casual conversation it was always a conversation just like we're having right now man you know yeah um that's it, that is the power of true persuasion it should be conversational it yeah. should be yeah yeah mm -hmm. it was a uh, somebody listening to somebody whether it was a uh, you know talking about their wife talking about their bass fishing trip whatever you know, it it yeah. was that, that kind of that bartender's ear, so to speak, you know, of being able yeah. to uh, yeah. really the biggest the biggest skill that I have found, um, be it selling, closing or being a podcast host. Um, it's shut up and listen. I'm glad you said that, because mo most people that even think that they listen are not actively listening. Mm. But there's a couple of things that happen when you actively listen. And, and number one, it means listening. Like you said, shut up and listen. You're not thinking of what am I going to respond to next? What am I going to respond to next? Uh, 
there's a, and we can't cover all of this on a podcast, obviously, but there's no. a, actually a, there, now we, we're not going to hypnotize people to bark like chickens or no. cluck like chickens or bark like dogs, but there is a, there is a, um, there is a focused awareness. That sounds better than hypnosis, right? Yes. Focused awareness technique that, could, that we teach that helps people with active listening and it helps the unconscious recognize the key points when you're talking and I'm listening to, rec- to help bring up relevant conversational stories. But active listening, and the best way to active listen, guys, is when somebody finishes talking, is learn those one or two little words like and, or mirror back the last two or three words of their sentence. Because what happens when you say and or but, you automatically, their unconscious says, wait a minute, they're asking for more information, I must not be finished, and they continue talking. The more someone talks... They hear their own voice. There's nothing more comforting to a person than their own voice. This is why they can go from skeptical to maybe neutral to really liking you because when somebody feels really comfortable talking, they start releasing different chemicals in their mind. And if they're looking or talking to you, it's attached to you. So that's one way to increase your active listening is and, but, or just mirror back the last two or three four sentence four words of the sentence they used, and then what that does is make them unconsciously go, "Yeah, he gets me. They understand me." Now for podcasting, when you're the host and you're talking, if you're doing an interview, make sure that person you're interviewing, you're asking and or but or you're mirroring back. If you're just talking into the microphone to an audience. There's some tricks on that, too. There's some things that we can teach that can really help somebody go, wow, they understand me, even though you've never met them. Yep. And so that's – but you you nailed it. Con- active listening is the best way to sell because they'll tell you what they need. Yeah, yeah, precisely. If you just If you just sit there and let somebody tell their story, they will, they will explain and unfold – everything including the emotional connection to the project that you're about to undertake with them whether or not they have an emotional connection which if they do should utterly change the way that you approach somebody be it behind the Mm -hmm. microphone or in a sales situation um so yeah and even once again that negative self-talk that that idea of um i can't like that Mm -hmm. i I have a four-year-old, and and that is one of the big things that I am trying to um, coax out of him, not hammer out of him, but coax out, coax out of him is the words. <laughs> I but I can't, but I can't. So, can, now I have two four-year-old, I have my four-year-old twin daughters, mm-hmm. and God bless. So me. I get that I can't. So one <laughs> of the, yeah yeah God bless my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, so one of the things that I use in that situation is according to whom mm. according who said that who said that yeah. you know if we go back to we go back i'm gonna go back into the bible where um adam messed up and he's been kicked out of the beautiful garden and, and he says i'm naked and the lord said who told you you were naked yeah who told you that and so when when a when a child or an adult anybody says i can't do this then it's like, who said that? Who said you couldn't? Yeah. Not because they have to answer you that in their head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but who said that? I'm confused yeah. because you. I tell my daughter when she says I'm shy or I can't do this, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a Sutton. So I have to give her a different I give her a different identity that I want her to own. And so you say, no, you're a Sutton, and Suttons are not shy. We're, we're actually brave and courageous and honor people. So what you just said isn't you that maybe somebody's influenced you. But And I remember the first time I told my daughter that. She was about mm. six. She said, Suttons are not shy. I said, no, we're respectable of other people, but we're not shy. And you're a Sutton. And there's some there's some psychological anchoring that we did there. But anyway, the point is, she was like, I got this. She literally said, I got this about what she was talking about. So it's that. Now, as an adult, when somebody says, I can't. No, well, that either a you you have a you know clarity issue. We can work through that, 
Or that's saying to me, you've never been willing to take time to learn. Which one is it? (laughs) You know? Um, But yeah, persuasion, that's why I said persuasion is so much more than, you know, just selling somebody something. Mm -hmm. It is persuading everything in your life. It's persuading in areas that most people would never think about with your children, with your spouse. And, and as long as your heart of integrity is there, then it will not be manipulative. The heart's not there. Yeah, it can definitely be. Well, and you know, it reminds me a lot of, um, back in my band days, back in the days when I was, uh, running sound at venues and with bands and sometimes four or five bands in a night. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember I came back to Houston, and at that point, I had been gone to Maine for about five years. Uh, and re- when I moved home, I reconnected with my old Grateful Dead band, things like that, and started running sound for them again, and all that kind of stuff. And the drummer was like, "You've changed, man. Like, like you're not like all laid back like you used to be. You're, you know." Uh, you see, you seem really cocky. And I'm like, cocky? Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm yeah. cocky. I would definitely say I'm confident in my skills and in what I provide, given given any situation. It's what I do for a living, Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. And it can come off of cockiness, I suppose. But at the, at the same time, um, it is that conviction. It is that self-persuasion that, like you said, you... You are something different. When you step into that role, you're putting on a hat. You're turning on a switch. You know? Yes. Um, yes. And go ahead. Well, I was going to say, when somebody says you you seem cocky or, or yes, cocky or whatever, one of the questions, I mean, this is a question I ask a lot of people is mm. according to, like I did with, with the child, according to yeah. whom? Well, I, I don't understand what that means. Can you clarify for me? Yeah. And... Because then they have to go in and go, wait a minute, what does that mean? Cocky? Question mark? You know, cocky? A little bit of a, a, a – tonality is everything in persuasion. Sure. Um, we know that. We hear that so much, especially podcasting. You know, what are you saying with your words, but how are you saying it? When, when I go into a sales – let's just talk real business. I go in to yeah. sell someone something. I don't want to come in with high pressure. There was a time for that. I get it. That was a time many decades ago. Yeah, yeah, like 1983 me, when I was like eight years old. Yeah. The high <laughs> high pressure sales thing was it, where it's like, all right, you know, we got sure. we got a quarter million. Can't do it. See you later. Going to the door now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But now, yeah, that was a time when the high pressure. But yeah. for me, it's really I, number one. If I I told people I can do five sales calls in a day, and let's just take a let's just take a fifty uh, percent. Let's take a I closed three, but I had to pressure them. I had to use shame and guilt. I mean, I remember in insurance, when I sold insurance years ago, mm. uh, if Mr. Johnson didn't want to buy insurance, I'd be like, well, listen, don't you care about Miss Johnson? Or don't you care if she dies? If you die, she's not have nothing. I mean, that was taught, you know, just make shame them, guilt them, yeah. get their signature, get their check. Okay. So you can do that today, or you can come in with where some low resistance questions and ask the right questions and get them to decide. Here's the biggest key to influence, the biggest key. When someone else has made it their decision to buy from you or to follow you or whatever, they will usually not argue with themselves. So if I can ask the right questions and get them to go, you know what, I really want this insurance. I feel like I need this. Yeah. And then I can say, but, but why is that? If you notice how I said that, but but why is why do you feel like you need this? Then they are going to sell me on why they need to buy the insurance. Now, end of the day, salesman A used high pressure, salesman B used neuro persuasion. Both ended up with three sales. Both lost two sales. But who's going to feel better at the end of the night when they go home to their family? Who's going to feel better because you didn't have to get high pressure, adrenaline, you and you just and you feel like you truly helped somebody, not that you truly manipulated somebody. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And it, it really is that 
once again, that subtle art of conversation that putting people at ease uh, to begin with, you know, and I mean, it, sales, it, it think situations like that are uncomfortable enough for folks to begin with, you know, and, and even as a host myself, uh, just to bring this back to podcasting folks, like um, when I, when I talk to people, on my show, which we get into some hard topics sometimes in, in one of my shows. <laughs> um, like, man, we talk about human trafficking, all kinds of stuff. Like, mm. there are deep, deep, hard topics. Um, yeah. And they can be uncomfortable for some people to talk about, even the people talking about them. So I normally mm. connect with okay. them about 30 minutes before. We go, we lightly go over a couple things. What do you want to promote? You have a book or any appearances, you know, are you out on the speaking circuit right now? Um, and then after we chat for a little while, just casually, like you and I did before we started recording this today, uh, it's like, well, yeah. just so you know, that's pretty much how the show runs. Um, it's, not, <laughs> it's nothing high stress. You aren't going to have a producer on the other end popping in, telling you things. Um, it's going to be a casual conversation between a couple people about something that you enjoy talking about and that you are passionate about. So, um, and, and really kind of leaving it at that, you know, like, Hey, once again, um, if you aren't comforted by the sound of your own voice and if, if you aren't okay enough to talk about you and either the book that you've written, the topic that you've spent half your life researching uh, the passion project that you just finished or the film that you just finished writing, like, wow, you, you maybe really need to rethink what you're doing out there. Yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> like and just that, from a guest perspective, and, you know, like if, if you're uncomfortable mm -hmm. talking about it and if you as a host can't put somebody at ease, um, you know, you, you said it great there. You're part of the host. As, as the host, your responsibility is to play someone of these. Yeah. Um, number of years, we're going to go back to, uh, wow, we're going back about 12 years now. There was um, TalkShoe. I don't even know if TalkShoe is still around, oh, TalkShoe.com. Wow. But with TalkShoe, I had a show, and I was doing Christian ministry, and I was interviewing people. And this gentleman said, hey, I'd love to be on your show. Um, I died. I went to hell. This is my experience. I wrote a book about it. I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. And what it was normally should have been a great one-hour great call was about eight minutes <laughs> and i was like he could this man had no ability and afterwards i'm like hey man i appreciate it but you've got to learn how to communicate your story your story is powerful if you can communicate your story yeah. but as a host you're exactly right what you did before the call was great getting to know me again and just talking yeah. about the website and and all of the hosts that are listening to this if you have a client that's maybe or a, a, a guest that's not really opening up, um, that's why you need to learn to persuade. You need to learn how to what language patterns that you use to get someone talking. If they don't shut up, you got to learn what language pattern pattern interrupts to politely interject and bring people back, chunking up, <laughs> chunking down. Yeah, you know. Well, well, so, and um, even it, even that in and of itself. Uh, what are the like? As an editor, as somebody who edits and somebody who produces, I, I don't, I'm not prone to cutting a lot of content out of a show. Right. Um, I prefer the live format. I love the live format. I am from a radio world where, hey, I had three million people a day listening to the radio broadcast I had going out. Like, I better mash those buttons right every time, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, and it's, it's really one of those, like, it, I find it funny how a lot of people want to cut out every, um, uh, stammer, anything yeah. like that. And for me, that's the fact of losing some of, I guess, the humanity of the conversation. Yeah. Some of the, yeah. some of the, the warmth and just general ambiance of, what would happen if you were, would you be that aggravated with the person if they were stammering like that when they were talking to you, like over a drink at the bar? <laughs> like, would you really be yeah. that, that aggravated that you couldn't put up with that personally? 
so you can't put up with it in an episode of a show that you like. Um, mm. So good point. Yeah. Very good point. Sure. Uh, and when it comes to that, uh, a lot of uh, the reason why I got off on that jag real quick was the the idea of parroting. Um, one of the mm -hmm. one of the concepts that I have given people to stop using filler words and and to stop stammering as much as they did was uh, go parakeet get yourself like a tiny little locker mirror and and put it up in front of your you know put it up in front of your computer monitor or something like that mm. uh, because yeah. there is that concept of eye contact with somebody you know them being present in the room and yeah you know not always is it the fact that uh, people are recording with video frequently it's the way that we're doing this where it's via audio you know yeah uh, so it can be uncomfortable for some people when there is no eye contact to make so how can how can people i guess without being in that physical place with someone uh really start that path of persuasion so to speak without without being physically there one of the greatest ways is, as I said earlier, is asking questions. And if I'm going to persuade someone, help someone, I'm on, I'm on a, I get, whether it's a podcast or whether I'm doing a sales call or whether I'm trying to save someone's life. So I've done a lot of uh, ministry counseling and, and really one of the greatest ways is to, as you said earlier, listen and, Feeling in the missing pieces. Most people need someone to listen to them. They, people want to be appreciated. People, in fact, I, I, there's three words that I always, I literally have a green uh, sticky note on my computer. Even though I've taught this for years and years and years, I keep the sticky note. Because people want to be understood. People want to be respected. People want to be valued. People want to be appreciated. They understood, respected, and valued. And if I, if I had to say, outside of any business, just person to person, if you can make somebody feel like you understand them, if you can respect their time, if you can value them as a human, even if it's a different belief system, then you can really have an influence in their life and them on you. Yeah. And this is the, the word, the value is so important in today's day because when you look at different religious beliefs, you look at different political beliefs, you look at there, it's really, really, we're in a moment of time when there's a lot of polarization. Yeah. But I don't have to agree with somebody to say, you know what, I value you as a person. And, and if I don't fully understand everything they're going through, I don't fully understand their point. Can I find a point? And what I often will say is in that area, I truly, truly understand where you're coming from. I'm not saying I truly understand where they're coming from in every area. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's not truthful. Number two, I have no way of influencing them if I'm just like them. But earlier, you, and that's something I use a lot, is earlier you said this, and you know what? In that area, I truly, truly understand where you're coming from. And it just builds this little bit of a connection. But I think the biggest thing we have to learn to do is talk the way the person needs to hear mm. and listen the way the person needs to be heard. And that goes back to, uh, again, a lot of a lot of training in linguistics and language. And, but to sum it up in a quick little mini one-minute answer is find out what's important to that person. And you cannot find out what's important to them if you're talking. Find out what's important, why that's important. And most people are going to give you a surface answer. If I wouldn't ask anybody, why is podcasting important to you? They'll give me an answer, but I listen. I take notes if it's appropriate. And then I try to find some common ground, but then I want to take that and go, why is that important? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one of the, it, a, a quick story of 
how I truly became, for lack of better words, just obsessed with persuasion and helping people. I was in my late 20s, so we're going to go back two decades, okay? Right. <laughs> but um, I'm in my late 20s, and I'm studying. I'm studying everything that I can find on human behavior, counseling, consulting, hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, name it, I'm studying it. And I'm saying, okay, I, I, take, I take the approach of Bruce Lee, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless. So I'm, I'm bringing it all in. And I had a friend, and now she's mid-40s, and she's torn. And she's like, Wayne, I, I really feel like I love this guy, and I feel like I love this guy, too. What do I do? What do I do? And I first just made light of it and kind of made jokes about it. Then I realized this is serious to her. She's middle age. She's ready to move on in life. Two very, very different people. And I said, Wow. What if, I mean, here's my question, what if I could give you the answer? Would you listen to me? She said, I don't know. I said, but what if you could feel the answer inside of you? You knew it was the right answer, and there was no doubt whatsoever. She said, yeah, that's my problem. I can't do that. I said, really? Who told you you couldn't? I said, let's do something. And I didn't hypnotize her, but I just said, I want you to close your eyes. I just want you to relax for a moment. And I want you to think about a relationship. I want you to take guy A and guy B and just kind of push them aside for a moment. I just want you to think about a relationship in general. What's really important to you in a relationship? If you had to say, this, if you had to say is a very powerful little phrase, because sometimes people go, I don't know, but if you had to say, I've never had somebody not answer me if I asked that way. But if you had to say what's most important in a relationship, and she said, and I, I, I was going to tell you, I don't remember what she said two decades ago, but she said something very surface level. You know, they care for me. They're good looking. They love me, whatever. I said, okay. And I, I listened to her tonality for one or two of the words. Okay, I get that. You said, and I used those very same words. See, every word has a meaning. Every word has a different meaning for everybody. So I took those words and I said, what about that's really important? And she began telling me what's important about that. And this time it went a little bit longer. This time I could see her shoulders literally drop, her physiology change. She opened her eyes, and I said, no, no, no close your eyes, because i got to ask you one more. You said this was important. Why ultimately? And I took her, so we asked what's important basically three times based on her own verbiage. While telling me what's ultimately important, I could see tears down both sides of her face. And she opened her eyes, and she said, it's John. It's John. And I said, why? But why? And that made her say it, and she went through this. So today, 20-plus years later, her and John are married. They're happy. Life is good. But she couldn't make her – she was confused with emotions, and she was confused with what she thought she wanted in a relationship. So that's why I said persuasion is more than just getting somebody to sign a check or, or send over an invoice. You know, pay an invoice is really yeah. about changing people's lives. Yeah. Well, well, and like you said earlier, it's really uh, – that's the whole reason why the beginning of your – your tagline is, and the company motto is, influence yourself, influence others, mm -hmm. impact the world. Uh, because until Absolutely. until you can really learn to let go and trust yourself and mm -hmm. know that things yeah. are going to be okay, um, it's, it's it, you know, it, you, have to, you have to sell yourself to yourself just as much as you do to anybody else on a daily basis. Uh, it really is that first decision when you wake up in the morning as to how you're going to approach your day, what you're going to do today, you know. Um, and it's so important to have that self-grasp and that – I'm not going to say feeling of importance, but that feeling of grounded as to who you are and what your path is mm -hmm. because that, that, that as a host of a show – and is the owner of a business, if you're hosting a show for your business, that is what makes that yeah. trusted voice. 
That is what makes mm-hmm. somebody, a, as a producer, that's what makes somebody a trusted voice. Um, yeah. And whenever you look at those, a, a few people just off the top of my head, three of them, whether you like them or not, uh, that stand out to me hugely as far as radio broadcast, at least, um, that knew how they influenced their audience, how hugely they influenced their audience, and they were able to monopolize on that audience influence. Uh, and whether you like him or not, it was Howard Stern. Yep. Uh, Rush Limbaugh and Alex Jones. Yep. Uh, like, like Alex Jones or not, like, the guy still, every bit of his content, the four-hour show that he put out every single day that used to go out to numerous platforms and is now stricken all across the Internet platform-wise still gets millions of listeners a day and millions of dollars a year on their own website. Because They're speaking it's, to... Yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I th- so they're speaking to an audience unapologetically. Yeah. And that's so key. Howard Stern, shock jock, talk yep. about whatever, and he didn't apologize for it. Uh, Rush Limbaugh, here's my conservative beliefs. We're going to do, again, didn't apologize. And Alex, as you said, you, banned. You really don't apologize. You know, <laughs> what, what happened when they said banned? He just started banned video. That was it. Now, now this yeah. is banned. It's that controversial people want to know. And he, if he doesn't believe what he says, he's the best actor. No, he's the best man I've never seen. He believes what he says, and that's yeah. so important. So yeah. is Howard influencing the world? I don't know. Uh, is, did Rush influence people in the way they believed, the way they voted, the way? Yes. Is Alex influencing people? Yes. yes. As you said, like them or not, yeah. they are great influencers because they're speaking to their audience without reservation. Wayne, they're speaking truth. Yeah. Yeah. That That's just it. That's just it. They do it, and like you said earlier, unapologetically. Like even, even myself with Dudes and Beer, it started as uh, – I'll be on, and I'm honest with my audience all the time. My my hardcore listening audience knows. Like, I started dudes and beer so that I was forced to get out once a week. Hmm. Literally, I started dudes and beer so that I would have a social life and talk with people outside of the world of audiovisual once a week. <laughs> That's amazing. That's good. No, and, and it was like, great. I don't care if we agree. I don't care if we disagree. Bring three topics in a six pack and we're going to sit back and have some beers and we're going to we're going to dig deep. You know, like we're going to talk about topics in the news and what we really feel about them. Uh, and then we started yeah. having hardcore guests. And now it's gotten to the point that even myself as a host and producer has to step back from the creator point of view and go. Where is this audience taking me? What what journey are we on? Um, and does it behoove us to keep this name? And at five year five years into a show, yeah, it does not, Wayne. So I'm rebranding. And that's okay that it does not. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, rebranding. Yeah, rebranding is. Many people look at rebranding and get scared. Like, oh no, yeah. the old Coke versus the new Coke. Um, yeah. I was old enough to remember that. But for me, <laughs> Clear Pepsi. All for the me, way. it shows maturity. Yeah. It shows the maturity and it shows the transformation. Um, I no longer uh, wear the the tennis, sho- the tennis shoes I used to want. I used to want Air Jordan tennis shoes. Yeah. Carol, uh, give me some flip flops now, and I'm ecstatic. Yeah. I've matured or grown older, whichever. Um, and sometimes that's what happens when we rebrand. The key to rebranding is uh, that authenticity hey this is where we're going and here's why yeah and um welcome to the new journey and if someone doesn't like that journey then feel free to find another yeah journey yeah <laughs> but but appreciate us for our journey and yeah. we're and where we're yeah. going you know and the, it really is that crossroads of mutual respect and empathy between people and um i think i think above all else what you're doing over there with 
yourpersuasioncoach.com and everything else is really trying to build that empathetic link between people, mm -hmm. trying to bring people back to the point of maybe stepping into somebody's shoes for 20 minutes while they're listening actively. Um, mm -hmm. whether, yeah. whether they're a host of a show, whether they are the owner of a business, whether they're hosting a show because of business, it really doesn't matter. Um, once again, it's that authenticity that people are tuning into. It's that authenticity of being a person that set people up to possibly even listen to what you're saying to begin with. And for all of the podcast hosts, one of the things that you can kind of implement in your shows up front is again, the authenticity, your, your, your true self, but letting people know ahead of time, this is, it, it's kind of, we call pre-framing. We're going to frame the situation. We're going to pre-frame. We're going to let people know what to expect. And so I learned this. Um, now I've had many teachers that taught on this, but I really learned this a lot from a hypnotist. And he said, when he had a hypnosis center, he said, when I was going to go do hypnosis for a living, he said, I found it very hard to find clients that took me serious. Oh, you're one of those people. Or you're like a psychic or you're a weirdo or something. He said, but I had rented a small office space. On one side was a, and I forgot exactly what it was, a massage parlor or something. On the other side was an adult bookstore. And in the middle is, you know, hypnosis. And he said it was so hard, but he finally recognized that. And he moved into a, another little strip mall of doctors. There was an internal medicine doctor on one side, a psychiatrist on the other. He was in the middle between the two. He said and instantly people started coming, paying more because he pre-framed I'm a professional. That's right. And that was a big, big lesson. And so you can pre-frame even on your shows. I tell people on my show a lot because I record a lot of my shows. And this as a podcast, a podcast uh, expert, you may cringe at this, but I'll record mine in the car. I'm like, hey, we're in hey, the car with Wayne. I love those. I love those. Yeah. And so if you um, hear background noise, it's okay. But I, also, though, in my call, I'm like, today I'm going to cover something that could potentially change the way you influence others.
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Podcast Cadet Training Series. For more episodes and information, follow us online at podcastcadet.com and all major podcast platforms. Join our Podcast Cadet Community Group on Facebook for the latest in podcast industry news and conversation with industry professionals. The Podcast Cadet Training Series is produced in association with HC Productions and the HC Universal Network of Podcasts. For more great episodes and content, or for information about distribution or sponsoring podcasts, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com today. Thanks for listening, and until next time, remember to press record.